The Russian military's landing forces are likely to receive significant reinforcements in the form of helicopters and tanks. Welcome everyone. In today's video, we're going to tell you Russian Air Force used the Mi-28, K-52, Su-25, and destroyed the NATO. According to officials in the Ministry of Defense, this decision would result in the construction of new Army aviation divisions within the Air Force as well as an increase in the number of tank units. But before we proceed the further details, if you're new to this channel, remember, go ahead and to hit the bell icon to subscribe, so you won't miss the informative videos we will upload in the future. The Blue Barrettes, one of numerous designations for Russian airborne forces, will be armed with a fleet of K-52, Mi-28, and cutting-edge mi 8 m Shechven helicopters. Furthermore, the number of tanks in their ranks will increase significantly. Notably, this strategic augmentation is largely influenced by the lessons learned from Russia's military action in Ukraine, which aimed to increase the efficacy of its so-called winged infantry. The Air Force will receive new Army aviation units, as well as an increase in tank units. The aviation portion will be updated with K-52 and Mi-28 assault helicopters, both of which proved efficient during the special operation in Ukraine. Furthermore, the paratroopers will be equipped with the latest Mi-18 Chef VN attack transport helicopter. According to sources, prior to the formation of the Northern Military District, there were intentions to form a brigade solely of Army aviation inside the Airborne Forces. These plans, which were previously abandoned, are again being revisited. Colonel General Andrei Serdyukov, the Airborne Forces commander, admitted in a previous interview with Izisha that with the use of Army aviation helicopters, Airborne units can efficiently combat highly mobile formations of a potential foe in varying physical and geographical settings, regardless of the availability of an airport network. He also noted that using Army aircraft considerably reduces the likelihood of landing troops being targeted by enemy fire, increases movement speed, and broadens the range of fighter delivery to the desired position. Reflecting on the special operation in Ukraine, he stated, a tactical landing in Gostomol is our true element. Currently, the airborne forces are deployed in motorized rifle units. Tanks are their major firepower, ensuring results. Storming enemy castles with only machine guns is impractical. Viktor Murakovsky, a military specialist, believes it is time to strengthen the airborne forces and shared his thoughts with his vestia, including lessons learned from the Northern Military District. He said the manufacturing of numerous K-52, Mi-28, and Mi-8 helicopters, as well as tanks, has increased. These helicopters would allow paratroopers to make efficient landings at shallow depths. Tanks along with heavy infantry combat vehicles and artillery continue to be vital forces in ground operations, assisting paratroopers in penetrating planned positions and reaching the tactical landing depth. Furthermore, new automated fire control systems are being installed in the Airborne and Ground Forces artillery. This will enable even more effective target engagement. All of these technologies, taken together, will improve the Airborne Forces' capabilities. Terrible Arrival The Mi-18 Chess VN helicopter, a relatively new addition to the aviation landscape, is scheduled to be acquired by paratroopers. This comes after signing a supply deal for the first 10 units during the 2019 Army Forum. This helicopter model is well equipped for diverse use, with advanced combat and landing capabilities. This makes it perfect for special forces and airborne troops. Its enhanced engine modification elevates it above its predecessors, enabling for continuous operation regardless of weather conditions. The Mi-18 Shex Vin helicopter boasts an excellent weaponry suitable for both air and ground targets. Its external suspension can hold two 12.7mm machine guns, unguided missile units, and gun canisters. The aircraft's superior surveillance and guidance system stands out. This allows for the use of Ataka anti-tank missiles as well as aerial bombs. Customizing weapons with for assigned missions increases the helicopter's target range. It can efficiently engage ground equipment, armored vehicles, and other helicopters. Other dependable names in the field are the K-52 and Mi-28 helicopters, which are both equipped to fight armored vehicles and men on the battlefield. The K-52, often known as a workhorse, is equipped with a 30mm cannon, 
unguided anti-aircraft missiles, whirlwind anti-tank missiles, aerial bombs, and other weapons. The Mi-28 TM stands out as an all-weather, anytime helicopter. It outperforms previous generations of automobiles in terms of efficiency. The previous requirement for a Mi-24 connection to resolve issues has been eliminated with the help of a few machines. Military Aviation's K-52 and Mi-20 ATM helicopters now carry the new Product 305, a light multi-purpose guided missile. Both of these helicopters have demonstrated outstanding operational synchronization, as evidenced by the CVO Russia refers to the CVO as a special military operation in Ukraine. Prior to the establishment of the Northern Military District, Armed Forces decision makers pursued an innovative approach for the use of Blue Barrettes, air assault forces. Larger than previously engaged airborne divisions were given a new lease on life, armed with tanks, artillery, and unmanned aerial vehicles. Moving forward to 2021, pioneering battalions began to emerge within the ranks of the airborne forces. According to the new strategy, Airborne troops should be able to alight from helicopters and be battle-ready right away. Notably, the presence of these units provides the tactical advantage of rapidly marshalling forces to an area that the adversary did not anticipate, catching them off guard. Currently, there is a determined push to reorganize the Russian Air Force. This requires re-evaluating their scope and deployment tactics, which is a substantial job. During the Soviet era, the Blue Berets were trained for large-scale landing operations in European conflict zones. The airborne divisions and regiments were ordered to paratroop behind enemy lines. Their primary duty is to launch quick but powerful attacks on key enemy targets, limiting potential reinforcements to the front line. However, the winged infantry of the Soviet era had an obvious disadvantage a lack of heavy weaponry and equipment. This weakness lasted in the post-Soviet period, when airborne units served as expert light infantry in local conflicts. The strategically critical airborne forces are now scheduled for significant reinforcements. Russia's Mi-28 attack, helicopters, destroy Ukrainian strongholds. In Do the Russian military stated the Army Aviation, in the course of the special operation, undertakes the tasks of escorting convoys, destroying Ukrainian armored vehicles, delivering paratroopers, military cargo, and providing air support to forces. The Russian Defense Ministry said that crews of Russia's Mi-28 assault helicopters damaged Ukrainian fortifications and personnel in the Donetsk area. During a combat mission, pilots on Mi-28 and helicopters launched missiles against detected Ukrainian outposts and personnel. As a result, all targets were destroyed, the ministry stated. That's all for today's video. The Russian military says that during the special operation, Army Aviation escorts convoys, destroys Ukrainian armored vehicles, delivers paratroopers and military cargo, and provides air support to forces. Don't forget to like the video and hit the subscribe button so you don't miss any new videos from our channel. Thanks for watching and see you all soon.